Hey guys, welcome to another walk-in Wednesday. This one is pretty exciting because you can see right away, I have an MP40 in my hands. Uh, this actually did come to us now. It didn't just walk in. It, it took, a, uh, took us a couple of months to get this from an individual. Uh, the reason it took us a couple of months is we're licensed dealers for machine guns. As an individual, if you wanted to buy this, it would take more like six months to a year uh, to get this. But you can own this if you have the money. Uh, by going through an extensive background check, there is special paperwork that you have to carry with you all the time if you have one of these. Um, but uh, you can learn more online about that through ATF. This MP40 um, is all matching and original finish. Uh, all matching is important because sometimes they would register the receiver and then put it with another gun. It's a long explanation to all of that, but basically they registered the receivers before 1986 and they were grandfathered in, meaning they're legal to own. After that point, they're not legal to own and you wanna make sure you buy one, if you were to get one, get one that is fully transferable. Uh, they also have something uh, called a dealer sample, which didn't make the deadline, but can only be sold dealer to dealer. Um, and there's a lot of restrictions on the dealer samples, but this is desirable because it is full auto, all original condition, and fully transferable. So as I mentioned, this one walked in, quote, that's, that's air quotes, by the way. I have a hard time doing the air quotes with holding a machine gun in my hand. Um, this one came to us this week, and lo and behold, I then bid on another one and won. <laughs> Auction house, I, I won this one. So they came in a couple days apart. And this is a twofer. I've got two MP40s. This one was made by Irma, which was the most common manufacturer. They made uh, almost a million of these. And this was a uh, contracted out to Steyr. There's several makers. Irma is the most common. Uh, Steyr, by the way, we did another video about the Steyr factory and slave labor. You might want to take a look at that one. It's really worthwhile watching. Um, I'm, I would guess that both of these factories use slave labor in the construction of these guns. But let's talk a little bit about the background of these guns. I don't want to spend a lot of time because there's a lot of uh, information on the internet, on YouTube, about the MP40. But let's talk a little bit about the development of this gun. So to back up a little bit, this is probably, other than the German Luger, the most iconic German weapon ever. If you watch any war movie, it's so cool to watch, uh, watch them shooting the MP40. They made about a, a million of these, uh, it's probably just over a million of these during the war. Uh, it started out as the MP38, and then uh, they only made about 40,000 MP38s, uh, and then they simplified it to the MP40. Now, interestingly, they are, the American army, and I think most of the allies called this the Schmeiser. Uh, I've called it the Schmeiser as well. Well, lo and behold, turns out, Hugo Schmeiser had nothing to do with the development of this gun. Instead, it was actually um, ordered by the German high command to come up with a machine pistol that would shoot the nine millimeter Luger because they had a lot of that ammo around and they didn't want to you know, get a whole new, uh, have to produce a new round and get, get them confused in the heat of battle. Uh, it's a nine millimeter Luger. Um, the magazine holds 32 rounds. Um, and, and something that would be cheap and easy to produce, mass produce. So they, uh, they asked some developers to come up with it. It was actually Vollmer who first came up with the design of the MP38, and then later other people were involved uh, to simplify it. Uh, one of the names that uh, comes up is Geipel. So those two guys, uh, can you imagine if you invented this and it's in all the war movies and there's a million of them made and everybody's calling it the Schmeiser? I would feel like I was getting no respect at all. My whole life, I don't get no respect. No respect from anyone. Another factor uh, showing how popular this was, uh, there, are, there are American soldiers who, when they would, uh, you know, if they could capture one on the battlefield, they, they, would, they would use it. We actually did a video uh, about Brad Pitt and the movie that he did carrying a German machine gun, something that he picked up in the war. Uh, did a video on that, worth watching, uh, check it out. 
Uh, but Americans did pick these up and use them because they were so popular. And, uh, and even the partisans, uh, when they could get one from a German soldier, they would use it. There's actually a, a picture on the internet of a French partisan. Uh, you can see her right here, French partisan. And I wanted to mention the way she's holding this gun because I, I found this to be interesting as well. So the way, the way that you, you should hold this, first of all, if you hold it by the barrel, it's going to burn your hand pretty quickly. Uh, if you hold it, it's this, this piece, this is Bakelite. Uh, they made it Bakelite to be lightweight and cheap. You could hold it here, but it's really seriously out of balance when you do that. It's very uncomfortable, at least for me. And they mentioned in the article that it's uncomfortable to hold it that way. So a lot of people will hold it by the magazine, and that's the wrong way to hold it. If you hold it by the magazine, uh, the research said that it, it bends the lips of the magazine, and so then eventually it won't feed properly if you do it that way. So we'll call this the magazine receiver. The best, uh, the most comfortable way is to hold it by the magazine receiver. And if you notice, this French partisan is holding it the right way. Now, the other innovation, uh, of course, uh, pretty, pretty uh, well known is the folding stock. In fact, uh, I think when I was younger, I had a toy, a toy Schmeiser, wrong name, uh, a toy MP40, and uh, it had the folding stock and all. So there's a button here that you push, and of course, the stock folds under and fits nicely like that. So in the movies, of course, you see a lot of times they're, they're, they're holding it like this. And you know what, they, I've read actually that there's not a lot of aiming involved. I have shot uh, one of these, I haven't shot this one. There's not a lot of aiming involved. It's a mostly point, point and spray. Um, so it's not, a, it's not known for its accuracy. It's for short range um, assault, where you're charging into a, a position and you're just taking out as many men as you can. <laughs> It's kind of like watering the yard. Now, a word about the folding stock. If one of these comes in and it's illegal, meaning it has not been registered, first of all, it's, it's, you go to jail if you have one of these in your house. So uh, people have called and said they have one. There are some options. You can sell the parts and destroy the receiver. Legally, you want to talk to your authorities, local authorities, talk about re, uh, destroy the receiver, and you can then sell the parts. The other thing that you can do is there are people who can turn it into a semi-automatic. The problem is with the folding stock, it becomes a short barrel rifle and therefore you still have to get it registered. And if you're going to do that, you might as well leave it in its original configuration. But here's one that we sold. It's a MP40 uh, and you can see uh, they actually welded the folding stock open. And also they added a mock silencer. That's actually not a silencer. It's a fake silencer just to make it a, a, a legal rifle in semi-automatic. So there's a couple ways that you can own them. Obviously the best way is in original condition. And that's what Legacy Collectibles got this week. In fact, we got two. And these will be going up on the site as soon as possible. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And more and more, I'm going to ask you guys to forward it to some of your friends. I get comments all the time that say, hey, you guys are the most underrated YouTube channel on the internet. And I have to agree. So tell your friends and family about us. Um, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you know when we post something new.